I, I want to touch on something slightly different than what we've been talking about, but definitely related to depression. And this yeah. is, again is one of these intriguing but perplexing things, which is that sleep deprivation yeah. can improve symptoms of depression. And yet I'm, I'm personally very familiar with the fact that if I don't sleep well for one night or don't sleep at all, in fact, I do have an ability to function pretty well the next day. I'll do this non-sleep deep rest practice that I blab a lot about on the Huberman Lab podcast, which is, for me is tremendously restorative. But I like a good night's sleep. I think everybody understands now, thanks to the great work of Matthew Walker and others that have really gotten out into the world saying, look, the foundation of mental health, physical health, and high performance, if that's your thing, being a functional human being is to try and get enough quality deep sleep at least 80% of the nights of your life, if you can. Yeah. That, that, that's, a, that's something to focus on, just like good nutrition, good, yep. just like exercise and social connection, et cetera. So sleep deprivation, we know, can imp in particular, I think rapid eye movement components of sleep deprivation can improve the symptoms of depression. And yet um, being sleep deprived can also really dysregulate our control of the yep. autonomic system. I notice on night two or night three of poor sleep, if I'm going through a stressful phase and that's happening, all of a sudden my heart rate is chronically elevated. Uh, my thought patterns become really disrupted. I can't then exercise, do I can, my decision-making is thrown off. My emotionality is more labile. The hinge, as we were referring to it earlier, feels less in control, uh, under my control. And maybe I wonder sometimes if I enter that state that you referred to earlier, where the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is no longer leading the cingulate, but the cingulate is now yeah. in charge. The players are in charge of the coach. Yeah, um, yeah. Not a good situation. So I know you've done some work on sleep deprivation and light and uh, effects. Um, please tell us about that. And um, please tell us about this triple therapy. Is yeah. That yeah. So a friend of mine, uh, Greg Salem, uh, one, another uh, one of the professors at Stanford, um, was very interested in sleep. He did a bunch of bunch of training in sleep before he went to medical school and um, and got very interested in this idea that, as you're saying, if you sleep deprive somebody um, one night, in just kind of an isolated single night, at the at the end of that sleep deprivation, they will have an antidepressant effect. But as soon as they fall asleep, they lose it. So if it's a depressed individual, you can get them to be less depressed acutely. As soon as they fall asleep, they wake up eight hours later. Then they come they come back into the same level of depression. And so the idea was that you needed to do some sort of circadian reset, and that part of what part of what depression is is that it's a dysregulated circadian system. And so mentors of mine say, if you can just get the sleep better, that's half the battle of dealing with depression because so many people have insomnia around depression and have a whole host of types of insomnia, falling, having a hard time falling asleep, waking up in the middle of the night and waking up early are all symptoms of depression. And so what this does is it sleep deprives the individual and then there's a certain calculation of shifting their phase and simultaneously exposing them to bright light. So that's the triple, the phase shift, the sleep deprivation, and the bright light to try to get their circadian rhythm. Essentially, the, the theory is re-entrained. And so, um, you know, in, in, the, in the trials that we've done and other trials um, prior to ours and, and, and after, you know, it looked like there was a pretty, pretty profound antidepressant effect from this triple therapy this triple therapy that seemed to be durable, meaning durability is this term we use to say that not only can you get kind of point relief, but that the relief ends up, you know, lasting. What's important to know about this is like, you shouldn't do this at home for sure. This what you would need to do this with a professional because it's complicated. It's not just one thing. And it, in sleep deprivation, while it seems to be antidepressant, it's pro anxiety. So if you take a highly anxious person that's not depressed and you sleep deprive them, they get profoundly anxious. And so that's the other thing that, that you have to really realize is that this is like everything else that I've talked about today, all things that you, you have to do under medical supervision, but, but curious, right? And, and I think, you know, the, the question that always comes up is why isn't this used more? And I think the reason is that there's not really a mechanism for you know, ultimately, in, in medicine, as sad as it is, you have to have a code to do a thing. There has to be a code associated with a treatment. And it's hard to figure out how to make a code for this. And so I think that's part of it. And so if if there's a way, and somebody's got to kind of take that baton on that, but if there's a way to make a code for this, 
um, you know, I think you could you could actually you know turn it into something that was more widely widely utilized. And you know, we probably dream up ways of how to how to integrate AI, passive sensing, all that stuff to really make that work. Um, but I think that would be that would be the the idea. That would be the trajectory I'd see. So yeah. Yeah, having a billable to insurance code is is fundamental. And a lot of listeners of this podcast, I, I think, have a background in engineering science. And we, we will put a link to that uh, manuscript yeah. that talks about the triple therapy because here we're talking about one night sleep deprivation, some time to light exposure to the eyes, and and then shifting in the circadian clock, things central to the themes of this po the podcast that come up often. Yeah. Um, I think for the typical person, can we say uh, that? trying to get a regular light dark cycle and sleep rhythm would be beneficial for overall mood regulation. Yeah, I think for for the typical person um you know really really kind of re-regulating your sleep and, and trying to get, you know, a good night's sleep in which you fall asleep, stay asleep, wake up in a set time every morning is going to be pretty crucial. Um you know, in, in mild depression, I think that one has a lot of control over that. As we were talking about earlier, I think when you, you hit some threshold in depression where things become kind of semi-volitional, it's harder to kind of will yourself into that. Um, there are therapies like, um, you know, there, there's a CBT for insomnia, for instance, where you can do cognitive behavioral therapy to help with insomnia. Sometimes people, and I'm, not, I'm no sleep expert, uh, kind of pass this to Greg to fully talk about this, but, but, um, but some of what goes on that people with kind of milder insomnia experiences like blue light out of their computer and things like that that they so you can use like blue light blockers to to it tricks your your brain as, as you know better than me it tricks your brain to think that it's still light outside and so people will they'll have insomnia because their brain still thinks that it's light outside and then people will um you know the, the kind of strip cbt for sleep um you know, uh, therapists will say there are only two things that you should do in your bed. And if you're under a certain age and, and whatnot, it's really one thing that you should do in your bed, which is to sleep and, um, and, and be with your partner. Uh, right. And so those are, those are kind of the two, um, the two things that you should do in a bedroom. And that's really the only things that you should do in a bedroom. If you're having sleep problems, you shouldn't watch TV in a bedroom, shouldn't eat in a bedroom, shouldn't, you know, hang keep out the phone out of the bedroom, keep the phone out of the bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we should get Greg Salem on the podcast. We, the, I'll just mention for people that want to regulate their sleep, we have a, a sleep toolkit that's available as a downloadable PDF at hubermanlab.com. Just go to the menu. And a lot of the things in that toolkit are based on work from Stanford sleep laboratories, including Jamie Zeitzer's and others uh, lab, um, not aimed at depression specifically. 